Now that we have all the timing pulleys installed, the ones up here for the Y axis, we did not tighten the timing pulley that's attached to this motor. And we, we have to wait to do that. We want to make sure we have it at the right level so that it travels properly through this uh, extruder carriage. For this part, you'll probably need at least three meters of GT2 time pulley if that's the kind of um, pulley, I mean, timing GT2 timing belt if you use GT2 timing pulleys. Six zip ties. These are very small ones. Four clamps of some sort. We'll be placing the clamps at this part of the linear rod on the x-axis. And the reason being is that once we apply tension to the timing belt that runs through there, we don't want we don't want that belt to pull in the y-axis rods. Even though we have fairly beefy 12 millimeter rods, we don't want any deflection in the middle. We want this to ride travel smoothly as it does without any belts on it. So we try to lock in that position by placing clamps at the very edge of the mounts. Unscrew your clamps. And get them open up enough where you can just slide it over the, the rod itself. The orientation that we'll have the we'll try to have these facing down with the the screw side out so it'll sit like this on this side and it'll sit the opposite way on the far side I'll put these on and I'll give let's see what it looks like okay and that's how those clamps are installed all that looks from the bottom right there you can see you also want to make sure that these do not get into the path of the of the motor I mean I'm sorry of the timing belt the sign belt's gonna go here the tail end of the um, clamp should not obstruct the path and once we have that on we can start putting on the timing belt for this part you'll take a little less than this is about a meter you take a little less than this we're going to do first we're going to feed this into there's a large opening that's going to be the path of travel for the belt. Uh, then a smaller opening. It's not really an opening. It's just where the belt will attach to the carriage. And we have not tightened, tightened up that timing pulley yet. Take the belt and loop it. Then we feed the belt, the running end of the belt, back through that larger opening. And it's going to go out the other side, larger opening. Feed this through. Back through the back around the bar, Let's form a loop there. Put a zip tie instead of the forceps on this side. When you do this, grab a old piece of time belt. Or just use this time belt. 
when you have your timing belt and you loop it around you want to loop it so that the teeth interlock once you put a zip tie in there and the teeth are interlocked it's a much more stable connection once we have this at a suitable height where that sits in the middle then we can tighten the set screws if your motor comes with a flat like mine does definitely try to line up one of the bolts one of the set screws with the flat helps in the long run prevents your uh, pulley from slipping all right so now it moves but it's obviously not tensioned enough And since we have the other side tied down, we can let loose our forceps and start pulling tension on this. Before we put the zip tie on, we definitely test that movement is not restricted. Applying too much tension can actually restrict the movement of this. That's about what you want. If you pluck, pluck the belt. Attach there, attach there, there is some extra, and I'll trim that off. We trim this off, uh, word of advice, see how there is a little bit of a tail on this side, that small amount. That's useful for when you have to put this back on, it's already cut the length. It'll be cut the length when we get done building this printer. And if you have to take this off for some reason, you want to have enough that you can hold it with like a pair of forceps or vice grips or whatever you use to hold this together while you put on a new zip tie. Don't cut it clean to the edge of the zip tie. You're going to have a hell of a time getting the zip tie back on if you do that. Install the belt for our y-axis. Let's go around that transmission rod and onto the pulley itself. Back up to the front. special set of instructions for this when we put on the y-axis belts remember that tension device we have here you want to loosen this up to allow this to come out just to the point that the um, the back plate of this uh, pulley mount is just at the edge of the SHF-12. If you go this far, we don't want this to lose support where we want it to still be snug. Because if you can see that, how close that is, that's okay. I would prefer to maybe have that much slack in it. Because we're going to try to, just as we tensioned up the, the x-axis, we're going we're gonna to tension this up the same way by hand. And then this will allow us to tension it further if, if need be. So just remember to have, have it pre-loosened pre when we put this on. 
this this should already be loose. Once around that pulley and feed it through again. This one I am going to clip a little bit more just because there is a tensioner here just to make make up the distance for that tensioning device. There's not a tensioner on the x-axis. There is here. This will catch up the tension. So depending on if someone if I want to configure this a little bit different later. And not use the tensioning device and just use this as just a change of direction for the timing belt. If you can see that or not. The excess from this side. Keep my fat fingers out of the way. The excess from this side, which is right here, goes loop back under. So it's out the way. And always there in case we need it. Now with our, our remaining almost meter of timing belt, we'll do the same thing. Put it around our rear pulley. loosened up just as much as the other side when you pluck them they should play the same tune getting all the mechanical components in place so we can move on to things like the print bed the electronics that's always fun One thing I did not mention before, this here, notice there's a clamp here, what I found on the other printer, and while I really do like these rigid couplers, I use one on the Z-axis as well, what I found is that after prolonged use, that these tend to back out. So, to prevent that from happening and not want to ruin the coupler itself by using a thread lock or just put a little dab of super glue in there to lock, I simply just put a clamp over it and tighten up the clamp. And that keeps those screws from backing out. Five clamps total. You know, the four on the X axis and one there. Five holes clamps. Alright, we'll see you next time.